Toronto Raptors were pretty damn good last season. They won 56 games. They were pretty efficient on both sides of the floor. Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan was one of the best backcourts in the NBA. Kyle Lowry, a two-way point guard who is as tough as they come and can also hit a three-pointer. DeMar DeRozan, who's a crazy person attacking the rim. The amount of free throws he attempts per game is among the best in the NBA. Although, if we can be honest, they did look a bit hesitant in the playoffs as both the Indiana Pacers and the Miami Heat pushed them to seven games. And then, while they did force a game six against the Cavaliers, so we should um, give them credit for that one, they're a bit ways away from actually being able to uh, defeat the Cavaliers in a seven-game series. Nonetheless, I do think Toronto actually has a chance to be better next season for a few different reasons. Number one, Damari Carroll will hopefully have a full healthy year because he only played like 20-something games for Toronto last season. And it's too bad because when they acquired Carroll, they thought he was going to be the guy who could defend multiple positions and be really good from three, efficient from everywhere on the floor, right place, right time kind of offensive player and athlete. And he was that somewhat for Toronto when he was healthy, but... Again, he missed like the majority of the season. His field goal percentage was not good at all. So hopefully with a full year and being able to really get comfortable with this Toronto team, he'll be able to um, be the two-way player that they uh, signed when he was on the Atlanta Hawks because he was really good for them. But then not only that, I think Valanchunas hasn't hit his ceiling yet. Valanchunas is a physically imposing center. In terms of his offensive ability, I mean, he's not very polished in terms of a low post game or being a shooter, but at the same time, he's really tough. He finishes well around the rim. He draws contact. He can grab rebounds. And I think he can improve on just simply being big for Toronto because I think it's his fifth year now, but he's still relatively young in the NBA. I mean, he's going to be 24 years old this season. So, And uh, these previous playoffs, he put up 14 points. 11 rebounds, and he shot pretty damn well from the field, so hopefully Valanchunas has a nice uptick for Toronto, and I think he will, just given another season in the NBA. But also with them, a huge strength for the Raptors last season was their second unit. Guys like Corey Joseph, who just knows how to play the point guard position. Patrick Patterson, who's a defender as well as a three-point shooter at the power forward spot. Terrence Ross, who admittingly is up and down when he's up he'll hit a couple of big three-pointers for you when he's down he's probably not going to play too much but he can still be a spark for you there's also Norman Powell who had a bit of a moment for Toronto towards the end of last season he didn't do much in the playoffs but I'm pretty sure he was a rookie last season so you can't expect him to do too much but he did shoot like 40 percent last season from three so Bare minimum, he can probably be a floor spacer for them. He does have another year of experience. That's good. They signed Jared Sullinger, who I think can be a nice 10-15 to minute player for his rebounding and post-up defense. He might end up starting because Dwayne Casey started Luis Scola all of last season over Patrick Patterson. So maybe Sullinger will start next to Valanchunas. Personally, I wouldn't do that. I would start Patterson for his spacing and defense. He is able to defend the perimeter way more than Sullinger would be able to. And I also think Sullinger and Valanchunas together would bog down the offense because Sullinger, I mean, he actually was pretty all right for mid-range for the Celtics, but that was with Brad Stevens getting him wide open mid-range jumpers. And Dwayne Casey, I don't really trust Dwayne Casey to do that as much as Brad Stevens did for Sullinger. And when I'm speaking on Dwayne Casey... I think he has gotten better. I would say he's probably like a mid-tier coach in the NBA at this point. But I also don't think he was the best in the playoffs. I mean, there were stretches in all three rounds where there were moments where DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry were not on the floor for the Raptors. I just think that can't happen. He also played Terrence Ross probably a bit too many minutes in the playoffs because, like I mentioned, Terrence Ross... Sometimes he can't miss from three and you love to have him out there. Other times he can't make a shot. He's inconsistent on defense and that's when you got to yank him. But 
you know, Dwayne Casey doesn't do that all the time. There was, of course, the whole Luis Scola playing period thing that went on for the entire year for the Raptors. Because Scola, I mean, he actually had a bit of a three-point shot last season, but defensively and athleticism-wise, I mean, come on, man. Patrick Patterson, by far the better option. And Dwayne Casey has also had moments in the past where um, he had James Johnson on the roster, who I don't know if he's there anymore, but he was a defensive player and like someone for the other team would be going off and then Johnson wouldn't be in the game. Although he's got Damari Carroll for that now. But ultimately, I do think Toronto can be a bit better this season simply because Damari Carroll will hopefully be healthy for an entire year. I don't think Valanciunas has hit his ceiling just yet. And Norman Powell is pretty intriguing as a backup for this team. And also one thing I should mention about Damari Carroll is he adds a lot of versatility to this team because he can play the small forward position, that's his natural spot, but he can also go to the small ball four at times. So you could run with a lineup of something like Kyle Lowry, DeRozan, Norman Powell, and then Damari Carroll, and then Valanchunas. I like that lineup a lot. So I think Toronto, talented team. Unfortunately, I wouldn't consider Lowry or DeRozan to be like top 10 players, which makes it really tough for you to actually make it to the NBA Finals because I don't think they can beat the Cavaliers. But they're versatile. It's a nice, talented team. I think they can be a little bit better. Now, if we look towards uh, past this season for Toronto to uh, free agency and all that, there's a chance that they actually could acquire some big-name free agents if they do a little bit of fine-tuning with their salaries. Of course, one guy who I think would be perfect for them is Paul Millsap, who his free agency is uh, coming up in a little bit here. If he decided to opt out after this season, the Raptors, as of right now, after this year, would actually be $5 million under the salary cap. And if you chose to dump both Terrence Ross and Corey Joseph, and then you also let Patrick Patterson and Jared Sullinger walk, you might have enough to where you could get into negotiations with Millsap. But the question is Kyle Lowry's player option. Because Lowry, if he declines his player option for um, the 2017-18 season, they're going to have to pay him like 20-something million which I believe that would take them out of the running for someone like Millsap. But if Lowry chose to accept his player option and stick to his $12 million next year, then I think you'd actually have a chance at Millsap. So I guess that just depends on Kyle Lowry's mentality as well as if Millsap or some other free agent really wants to go to the Toronto Raptors. I mean, personally, I would love to see Toronto acquire a big-name power forward because that's the one thing they're really missing. But if Lowry chooses to want $25 million from the Raptors, then it kind of takes you out of the running for a guy like Millsap. 